So today I'm going to talk about where clay comes from. So looking here, this B mix is this white clay and Amador is this darker clay and it's based on what materials are in it. So I'm going to talk about the differences with them and why one's easier for hand building, one's, one's usually the nicer for some people on the wheel or trickier on the wheel too. So clay is a felspastic material. And that's a term that you'll hear me mention periodically. So I always tell people, think of clay and you think of the Rockies. So this is our granite, our rock. And if you think of a granite tabletop and it's all polished, you'll see little specks that are shiny. That's the silica that's in there. And then you have the alumina in there. And those are, and you learn about alumina as, a prop, as what is clay in the handout that I gave you that's online in the different class shells. But how do we get from here to here, to the clay that you work with, okay? So over millions of years, you have rain. So there's my happy little cloud. And you have the mountain being worn down through erosion. So, and what happens, you get this deposit, which is primary clay. This is the stone broken down and you get a good deposit of primary clay. Also, um, different books talk about it. It's a pure clay. It's normally white. It's really, really fine material. And it sparkles a little bit because of the silica content. Now, primary clay right here has another name, which is kaolin. And that's the term that I know I've given you in your handout. So kaolins are our primary clays. Now, properties of them, if I looked in a microscope, they have little sharp edges still. They also have a lot of water between them, so they stretch okay, but they shrink a lot. So you hear the nightmare of porcelain, like a B-mix. When I was working in my business, I used B-mix a lot, but I had to make a paper patch, a slip patch, a slip of this clay with a little bit of paper and a little bit of other binding agents. And the reason for that was this clay likes to crack. Most porcelainous clays or kaolins, when they're pure clays like this, which this is a high percentage of, likes to shrink a lot if you dry too fast and then you get cracking. So I would have handles crack on, on my pots, lids crack, rims crack. So I made a patch so I could fill in the cracks, seal it, re-biscuit, and then fix the cracks that way. Our stoneware clays, our traditional stonewares, um, don't crack as easily because this clay has sand mixed into it, which is actual coarse silica sand. Also a material called grog, which is fire clay that's been pulverized and then mixed back in. So this bag of clay is actually a couple different clays mixed together. This clay here is a couple bit clays mixed together, but it's mostly a primary clay with a secondary added. So let's talk about secondary. So as this deposit gets moved down with river or water, as it gets moved from its original location, with water action, you get the clay particles being moved around and you get that spiraling effect, the tumbling effect. It's hitting the rocks. It's collecting stuff. So what happens is you get what's called secondary clay. This is a deposit of clay that, that has gone through a little bit of life. What that means is as it's gone down the river, it's collected other materials. So it's collected iron. The Amador clay has iron in it. It has collected other minerals sometimes, and it's collected organic material. But the main thing is the clay particles have now been worn down, so they're rounded. So what happens with secondary clays, and you'll usually hear me call them ball clays, is they're very, very fine particles. So with a ball clay, it's even more plastic. It's even more stretchy than the kaolin. Now those clay particles also in a firing process will shrink a lot. So when I recycle clay, when I make clay, I mix primary clay with secondary clay, which is the ball clay. But if I add too much ball clay, instead of the piece shrinking 8%, it might shrink 16%. So sometimes students will get a batch of recycled clay that we make here and it shrinks a lot. It tells me, oops, I put too much ball clay in there that, that time. So this is just the basic differences between them, okay? now. There's another type of clay called fire clay. And it is naturally occurring clay that broke down but without very much water action. So it, its particles are actually a mixture of different shapes. 
and we use this clay as filler. So we use this third type of clay mixed in to change the recipe of the clay based on what I'm trying to do with it. So just to let you know, these bags of clay have multiple different types of clay that the companies have mixed together for you to make it easier to work with. But we need to understand the different types of clay that are out there, how they fire, how they shrink, how they change for the firing process to get your durable ceramics. So just as a recap, you have primary and secondary, which is your kaolin, your ball clay, and then you have fire clay, the clay that actually has particles that are all kinds of different shapes and sizes. And they're all found in nature. And what we do is we collect it, we gather it, we screen it, and then we get it ready for use in the classroom or anywhere around the world.